it's probably a question of stability. It's, life is much more stable. Still, the profits came down out of the 130, maybe about uh, 100 million was for life. Still, a significant drop from 700 and something the previous year, but driven primarily by the investment income uh, environment. Stock market was devaluation of property because life obviously also is long term and it invests significantly in property. And you've seen many people even go more aggressively into property. Mm -hmm. So property, the flow of income is not steady. It will have, it will, yo yo, a bit, particularly because refining every year, probably not viable. Mm -hmm. Yes. It performed quite well um, at underwriting, uh, at underwriting level. Uh, general lost money, life made money as usual, uh, and life will generally make money at underwriting level because it's quite stable. Uh, general, the losses were, affect, were brought about by mainly the issue of motor private and medical business. Yes. They've lost money for a long time for us. They continue losing money and uh, we are looking into it. Yeah to either reduce, uh, and not to either, to reduce a bit of motor private and to try to see if we can streamline medical to ensure that it makes money. Um, uh, so challenges there, driven by those two classes, which are big, because between the two of them, they, they are more than 50% of the industry premiums, proper medical and uh, motor private. Um, so challenges there. Um, when you go to the right side, as, I'm say, as I said, stable, no issues, generating and writing profits, um, and uh, we can't complain about that. The two of them have uh, similar and different challenges. Let's deal with the medical first. One of the issues is the cost of medical care in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's extremely high, and I know you know friends who have been admitted for a day and for two, and when you see them bill, you are shocked. Mm -hmm. Or you've heard stories of the bills here, and when one went to India, what that bill came to some, in some cases, a tenth. Yes. So our medical is expensive, our hospitals are expensive, genuinely so proper prim because obviously we've not invested enough on it. When you have a few good facilities, I count up really about five, where everybody wants to go, obviously, uh, it means that uh, they can change a bit more. And also, most of them are equipping themselves now, and obviously medical equipment is quite expensive. So they would want to recoup and expand, and you've seen the way they are expanding. That's right, and even on their main uh, hospitals, yeah, most of yeah. them are building, big buildings. To take advantage, obviously, of the growing demand, but that, that coupled with the fact that um, they are not many, it means they are put, they sometimes even increase prices twice in a year. The other aspect about medical, apart from the high cost itself, and obviously that pricing, sometimes it's difficult to take it into account because like, if they increase twice, it's very difficult for you to go back to your client and say, I want to increase my premium. The other aspect, obviously, is that um, even where, you know, this fera is making me losses, we've not been best of operators, the insurance industry, so you're still undercutting and competing. So you find people picking rows, making accounts from one another at even lower prices. And I've seen where I try to increase, say, I know your rows ratio have been with you, I know you've lost me this money, this is the match that I'll change this year. You find someone else, you'll come and even change below what you'd change the previous year. And obviously the client genuinely so moves to that party. Um, so there is an issue of undercutting, which means we are not pricing it properly. And uh, finally, I think there is an issue of fraud, which also is difficult to quantify, uh, but is significant. Fraud by the professionals in the health sector, 
doctors, hospitals, pharmacies, uh, and all those, and fraud by the patients themselves. So when you combine those three issues, fraud, undercutting, and uh, the cost of healthcare in Kenya, uh, you have a recipe for making losses. On the other side, motto private, why do we make losses? It's again two principal issues. Here, fraud probably is more preferent than in medical, and undercutting is also more preferent than in medical, because everybody is doing motto private everywhere, so it's very easy. And you've seen it even where the regulator would say these are the ratings. Many times they are never respected. We are now going into a regime even where the ratings won't be there. It's a risk-based model. You do what you want. If you want to wipe your capital, you do. And I suspect then people will change. And we've seen some insurers change, uh, analyze the business, say this kind of cars, this rate would want to change, these ones would want to change much higher rates, basically to discourage some, encourage other and all that. And I would expect that most of the insurers that are capable should go that route. So that then competition is changed. Those people who are profitable, you are able to give them better pricing and better service. Those who are not, you change them and probably encourage them to go elsewhere. I think a couple of things. If you look at, from it, at it from the big picture perspective, the insurance industry obviously is still quite young, okay, or quite low, or quite operating at quite rudimentary level compared to banking sector, for example. So the potential is there, is huge. And obviously in an industry that is not mature, you find many times, many investors look at it in terms of uh, top line and market share and those things, and they say, once it is settles, then you think about profit at that time. Uh, and I think you can, uh, you, you've seen it uh, even in telecommunication, you've seen people chase uh, top line for a long time, but obviously there the money lost is a lot, so you can't do it for long. So that was one thing that um, people believe there is room for a lot of growth and they would rather grow and then figure out how to make money when things stabilize. The other aspect obviously is the way the regulation was and, the way, and but now it's changed. The regulation that does not penalize loss making one way or the other obviously leaves the, the, the investors the, um, with a, with a free or they have some sort of freedom to chase top right without getting penalized on the bottom. But I think the issue of the risk-based capital will change that because then they will have to put money when they lose it. Yeah. Uh, and when you write more, you need to uh, capitalize it. If you write more and don't correct premium, you even need to fund those premiums. So I think the regulation was not aligned with the issue of the uh, bottom, right? It's much better right now. Because you can imagine if a bank makes losses, what will happen is to have to reduce its deposits literally, isn't yes. it? Because it's uh, antiquous. It's the same thing that's going to happen to the insurer. Mm -hmm. If you make loss, you either have to scale down or inject capital if you want to continue growing. So I think it was an issue of regulation. The other one is just simple short-sightedness by both owners and managers of the industry. It's an industry where many people have been in it for a very long time. It's an industry that has been closed. And when you don't find people coming in, obviously the thinking can become the same. You can say, uh, I was with you in school. Why is your company growing bigger than mine? Let me grow mine. Some of those things, obviously, are awesome. But we've seen some companies that have been very consistent, and I think you mentioned guys like KNG. I don't think they are chasing top line anymore. But they are very keen on their bottom line. Obviously, they will still face the challenges, uh, but that's where we are going for everybody now, particularly with the risk-based capital. Our new value proposition is threefold. One, 
is, and it's very important, is value for money. Insurance in Kenya and in many places also is part of people's investment for the future. One way or the other, be it retirement benefits, be it life insurance, be it a school policy, be it the uni plan that we've talked about. What people are trying is to achieve a certain future. So if um, you tell them this is what you get and they don't get it. So we've said we we'll only give our customers product that give them value. That is number one. So one is value for their money. That one we are very clear about. The number two thing that is very important to us is the experience that the customer has with us. That whatever we say, we will surpass. And that the experience with us will be a very good experience over time. Eh? Um, so that then they are happy with us. We don't disappoint them. We don't uh, meet the, if it's a um, general insurance customer, we, when they come, we don't say, we will pay you next month. So the next is proper customer service to the customer. A service that is uh, expectant or exceeds the expectation. The third one, obviously, is in the area of technology and we discussed about, is to serve our customers wherever they are in terms of technology. So that you don't have to go to the bank to pay money. You don't have to go to come to a branch to make a claim. So technology becoming integral part so that customer then can get convenience. So it's convenience through technology, value for money, and meeting their day-to-day -day expectations in terms of interaction. Thank you.